I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible. I like these little walk and talk things that people do, so I think I'm going to start doing them. I need to put out some more content, especially with my goals and my ambitions. And yes, I could do with a shave. That's quite obvious. But what I would like to speak about is the feedback that I've had from people regarding a possible investigation and curiosity regarding Danny Kerwin and his time with Fleetwood Mac. Now, I've been, I've been thinking a bit. I haven't, I haven't done any digging, not recently anyway, but I've been thinking. Now, we all know when you join the music industry, you have to sign a contract. My father was quite well known for saying that this is the devil's work. And they would look at him like he was nuts, even though he wasn't nuts. Well, in, in terms of, you know, I, I believe I understand what he was saying, because you're, you're selling your rights to your own, your own creation. So you're selling yourself in a way. So I, I see what he was saying. But obviously other people, they had different agendas and different ideas. Now, when, when you join the music industry, as I was saying, you have to join what they call a little club that's not so little. Now, Amy Winehouse, when she was around, she, she said in her last interview, I think it was her last, on Jonathan Ross, that they were trying to mould me into a big triangle shape. And I said no. And then after that, she was basically carted off in a red body bag which is apparently a sign of some form of uh, sacrificial like assassination or something I don't know but it was quite strange I, I'm not fully up to date on the knowledge on you know that aspect but it was very strange uh, the, what do they call it the 27 club or something one second So, yeah, the 27 Club with, um, I think Kurt Cobain was one of them, a few others. And, yeah, like, when, when you join this music industry, I, I'm trying to keep this short, you have to join a little club. Now, there's no way, in my mind, that Danny Kerwin, or my father, would have joined this stupid club. They would have been totally against it. Which is, you know, there's no wonder why my father wanted, you know, a commune environment like Germany that he saw in Germany. And apparently he had a really good time. He always says it was a really nice time. But I believe, and this is only a theory, I believe that, and I'll back it up, I believe that... Danny Kerwin and my father didn't want to join the Hollywood Fantasy Club. So when <clears throat> when they didn't want to join, and this is a theory, they were taken out. They were taken out in a sense, socially, which definitely happened, psychologically, which definitely happened, and you know, they were off the scene, they were completely diminished. So and, and the evidence that I'm backing it up with is when they left the band, when all these problems arose in the band, what happened? They adopted two women into, into the band, you know, and then they hit major stardom, major stardom. And we're talking pop icons, you know, Literally, the music that they were bringing out, the way that they were, you know, it was, it was your general feel-good pop music. Not anything that Danny Kerwin or my father would have wanted to play. There's no way. And, you know, surviving through the 80s and stuff when things got a bit cheesy, 
no wonder they excelled. But it's almost like because my father and Danny Kerwin didn't join the club, they were taken out. And a lot of you are going to say, oh, you're talking shit. I can completely understand that. But please, you know, realise this is just a theory until I actually, until I actually get to the bottom of what has happened. And, and you might think, oh, you don't, you know. I, I do care. I do care a lot. And you know what? I, I care more about justice for Danny Kerwin because my father had a voice. He could have spoken out. He could have spoken out against it. I believe that Danny was very, very traumatised about what happened. And, yeah, that's basically what I think happened. They didn't want to join the club. And, you know, they were swept under the rug, as I say and kept away so then they could become this manufactured hollywood type celebrity process where they could literally feed crap to the masses and be promoted because now they are members of the club have you seen mick fleetwood's twitter page have you seen the the weird crap that he puts on there he's got like devil horns on his head he's like educating a child with a, a canvas on a board uh, speaking about religious aspects while while he has devil horns on his head the the symbology on his twitter page is completely satanic <sighs> i should go to hawaii and and blinking put some hair in his food and complain or something god i'd love to kick mick fleetwood in the nuts and I hope you hear this, mate. I hope you freaking hear it, because my father would probably do the same thing. I don't know why you produced produced such rubbish after my father left. It is quite obvious why people appreciate my father more than the the rubbish that was produced afterwards. I mean, I think half of half of Stevie Nicks tunes are about witchcraft like it's just incredible I think Stevie Nicks has a convent of witches a convenant or whatever you want to call it Harry Styles was adopted by her he's obviously in the club if you're not in the club you will not get any any uh, airtime you've got to join the club otherwise otherwise you're screwed and if you make it then they basically, they force you to join the club. And if you don't join the club, then, you know, the 27 club, that's when that comes in, I guess. But yeah, what a weird world. I mean, even this bloke at the moment, Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate is like a pinnacle of masculinity at the moment. It's like, you know, men are actually enjoying the fact that he's, I don't know, masculine? Not masculine to me, he's blinking. I don't know, but he, he gets a lot of airtime. He, he gets a lot of, of, you know, media attention. If you, if you get media attention, you're in the club. You're in the flicking club. That's what I've learned. And it, it's so obvious that my father and Danny would never join that club. So no wonder shit happened. No wonder. But the people that did join and the people that are, you know, projecting this symbology and these images of, say, devil horns and all this satanic nonsense, they're the ones that made it. They're the ones that ended up, you know, don't stop thinking about tomorrow. I mean, what great lyrics. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. I mean, I'm sorry, that makes me cringe. That actually makes me cringe. Anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm still digging. If you've got any ideas for me to go on, I'd appreciate it. And I will keep on making videos, hopefully with, hopefully with some decent content and some decent information. 
I'm getting, I will possibly be speaking to someone who was involved with Danny Kerwin soon. So we'll see what happens with that and I'll keep you updated. But I am really, I'm really militant on this subject. I want to find out why they're lying. I want to find out why Mick Fleetwood and Jeremy Spencer and John McVie sat there with that roadie, uh, Dennis, or whatever his name is, and they lied. They lied on Channel 4, and I want to know why. Because Danny Kerwin was never at the Munich party. He wasn't there. And obviously I'm going based on, based on Rayner, but I believe Rayner, he's got nothing to lose. You wouldn't lie about someone not being at a party. It's totally obvious. So take it easy, I'll speak to you soon.